Hello kids, this is Mo Howard. Today you're probably wondering what is going on in this video, and why this picture is up. Even if you've been following me recently, you probably noticed that I inserted clips of this man right here that you're seeing in a video of Derek Sigafu's Dax Fame Exposed. One of, the video, one of those videos were, was the Max Hedrum incident, which I'll be explaining in this video. I also imitated it. And I hijacked someone else's video. I'll link them both below. So, now to begin describing the incident, shall we? Now, on November 22nd, 1987, at 9.15 p.m. Central Standard Time, White Callaway is on Channel WGN during the sports news. Anchor Dan Ruin was going over the Chicago sports news of the day. During that day, he was going over the Bears-Lions game, in which the Bears had defeated the Lions earlier in the day. It's football. Then, suddenly, at 9.15 Central Standard Time, the picture cuts off into something very strange and unusual, and it was a rude awakening for Chicagoans. You're about to see what that was. What's happened? <laughs> so am I. Now you are probably wondering what the heck you just saw. What you just saw was the screen cut over to a man wearing a Max Henry mask. That's right, they just were hijacked. And this hijacking lasted about 30 seconds until WGN engineers were able to switch the microwave signal transfer frequency, which is what the hijacker is using, to get their signal back. Now before I go any further, What's big? Let me tell you who this Max Headroom character is. Now, Max Headroom was a cyberspace dwelling TV host, the first of its kind, that was originated in the UK in a popular Britain movie, uh, which in which he was the titular character. After the movie was successful, he ventured overseas to the U.S. to start a TV show of the same name. Unfortunately, in 1987, the show failed in ratings against Miami Vice and was forced to cancel. Now, Max Hedrum himself was known for making funny jokes, funny jokes, stuttering on the camera, like da 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 And he was known for uh, uh, making advertisements for the ill-fated New Coke. Here's an example of one of the New Coke commercials. Hi, Max Hedrum here with... This is my guest. <laughs> I heard you were big time in the old pop is. <laughs> Well, I'm going to take that as a no comment. So, nitty gritty time. What I'm talking about, and you're not, is that more people prefer the new refreshing taste of Coke over Pepsi. Sweating? It's true. More people are, as we Cokeologists say, catching the wave. Catch it if you can, can. Catch the wave. Coke. <gasps> Isn't Max just so lovely? Now back to the intrusion. The second incident, which took place two hours later on WTTW 11. It took place during an airing of the Doctor Who serial known as Horror Fang Rock. Now, the plot of that episode, which started the third Doctor, Tom Baker, was that there was a man who was trying to secretly take over an island, somewhat similar to the hijacker who was trying to take over the television. Kind of weird how they're similar, right? So, anyway, during the scene, it is quite interesting to see how suddenly Max takes over again. Before we continue on to the intrusion, I'd like to point out two things. Three things, actually. First off, this video could be blocked briefly by BBC Worldwide, which owns the rights to Doctor Who. Because I've seen a lot of Max Hedder videos have that problem. People have been telling me about that. If it isn't, so be it. I know how to break it free, and it shouldn't last long. But I'll talk about it in the comments later. The second thing I would like to talk about is what you're about to see. Keep your eye on the screen right as the intrusion is cutting off to max, the video is. You'll notice that it's like a tearing as in the B VHS or beta tape. Very much concluding that it is not a live broadcast. That it is in fact pre-recorded. And that this is planned. Also don't forget that there's going to be a jump between a sitting max and a bent down max, which we will get to later. Also, the last thing I wanted to mention is, is that there's going to be subtitles throughout the video. 
This is my attempted transcript of what I believe the perpetrator is saying as audio is in this video. Enjoy. I'll get you a hot drink. As I can tell, a massive electric shock, he died instantly. The generator? Were you always so careful? You're going to watch it again, but this time I'll provide commentary during it. Let's do this, huh? I'll get you a hot drink. <laughs> Chuck Swirsky was a sports anchor for WGN at the time. Calling him a freaking liberal was reference to the idea that many people believe is that Max originally wanted to interrupt the sports programming at the auto breakthrough, and this audio at the very beginning would make sense. That's true, as I showed you earlier. The new Coke commercial, that was its slogan. The man behind the mask was mocking the Royal Max headroom. It may also be worth noting that when he tosses it to the ground, you can hear a lot of clanking as it's on a hard surface. As it may be the hard surface in a garage, this implies that it was in a garage rather than a studio, and now it's on hard floor rather than carpet. What in the name of God is that on his finger? Is that like a toy? God, that is just, that's just so messed up. Apparently, Max is a fan of The Temptations. There's a song called, I know, parentheses, I'm losing you. And the first lyric of the song is, your love is fading. Clutch Cargo was a television series from the 1950s. Yes, my time. I Still See the X is a reference to the show's final episode. And if you don't know what Clutch Cargo is, here, I'll show you the opening. Clutch Cargo with his pal Spinner and Paddlefoot in another exciting adventure, The Big X. When he says, oh, my piles, he is referencing the medication known as Preparation H, which is an ointment cream that was used to cure hemorrhoids. This medication was very popular in the 80s, and several ads are used that, to promote it. It's funny because he said it wrong. But Max said, greatest world newspaper nerds, that was his, quote, attempt at trying to mock WGN's call letters, world's greatest newspaper. And yes, you heard it right, Max actually said it wrong. 
<laughs> what a way to botch that. That's funny. <laughs> No, oh, Max, there is a simple solution to this. Don't let your brother step on your other glove next time, huh? That should make everything hunky-dory between the two of you. It's a good thing you two are doing this together, or this might have gone bad, huh? What in the world? Oh, oh god, that's just that's messed up. As if this wasn't scary and scarring enough, they had Max here had to force a, a woman wearing a maid's outfit to do this to him? God, how much did he have to pay her to do that? Oh, God, I just... Please, I beg of you to stop right now, Max. Please, I beg you, please, please stop. Wow, thank God that ended right. Well, <laughs> that was quite interesting. I hope you enjoyed what you just witnessed right there. And now, to continue, we are not quite done yet. There's still one thing I should show you. It is a news report that followed the next day. Yes, the very next morning, no one had to to report on this truly terrifying incident. And in the meantime, while that's playing, I will talk about what happened in the aftermath of the incident, like within the next days and months and stuff, as well as theories behind who could have potentially done it. So let's do this, huh? Where to begin on this? Well, here's where. How about the fact that both the FCC and FBI immediately jumped on to investigate this incident following the investigation? It became it was hard early on to find leads due to the microwave signals that the hijackers are using, which are weak and could be used in a lot of pen potential locations, making investigating hard. But less than a year earlier, a man using the name Captain Midnight hijacked uh, HBO during a showing of the Falcon and the Snowman and showed a message on it with, you know, the color bars protesting against their money, what they're charging. He was caught and his name was just, something to do, go forget what. And... That's because of all the power it used and it's easy to track. This though was much weaker and it would be much harder to track this. There was one promising lead however and that was it found a warehouse which could potentially be where they filmed. Fortunately they had no proof, they had not enough proof to go in there and check themselves. Eventually they couldn't find any other, you know, leads. It eventually went cold. And that's why it's a cool case of today. It remains unsolved. Although in 2010, and there's a theory behind who did it, there is a Reddit article by a user named B Pogue. That's P-O-A-G. And the letter B, of course, the beginning. And he claims to have been affiliated with a uh, Chicago freaking scene, which specialized in computer hacking and programming and stuff. And he had... There was three members of this group was a, a man named Jay who was thought to be autistic, his brother Kay, and his brother's girlfriend, Kay's girlfriend. He, he was thought that uh, Jay was the one behind the mask, Kay was the one that was filming the camera, hence the whole my brother is wearing the other one thing, and was the one who was bent down because, you know, there's no way an autistic person would let that happen to him at the very end of the video. And, uh, Kay's girlfriend was the one spinning the metal and the one in the maid's outfit. It's also the reason why the, the, uh, corrugated sheet metal that was spinning in the background was no longer spinning when she's in the shot. So he claims that one of the meetings of the freaking group took place on the day of the incident during the afternoon. They were at, they were eating lunch at a pizza hut and... He was in a different party, he was in his own group of friends, JK, K's girlfriend, they were all, like, off on their own. His group gets told of something, of what is thought of as something big, in quotes, that J and K were planning to do. So, on his way out from the restaurant, he asked, was probably K, he said he didn't remember for sure, and this is where I find a little bit of a problem in this article, he asks K, 
you say you're playing something big, what is it? And K said, just to be sure to watch Channel 11 tonight, WTTW. The problem with this is, is that it, the initial target was WGN, of course, and there was all kinds of WGN references. So if these guys did it, you'd think they would have said, hey, be sure to watch Channel 9 that night, WGN. You know, so that's the problem I found in that. But there could be a few reasons why this happened, I'm assuming it makes sense. First off, maybe he misheard him. Maybe he did say Channel 9. Who knows? It's going to be hard to confuse those two words, but still. B, maybe because it's been so long, remember this is 1987, maybe he forgot. That's the second theory I have on why he said Channel 11 instead of Channel 9. The last one is that maybe in the back of their minds, Channel 11 was a target all along. And you know, it's like, that's a first sure target that they could always do. While WGN was, hey, we'll try it. If you can't get it, that's no big deal. Which to me is probably the most, most plausible theory of why that happened. That makes sense to me. And what you're seeing right now, I'm glad I stopped right here, is uh, they went to the streets to try to get people's reaction. This boy said very, very funny right here when he was asked about it. And one man, well, one man said he wanted to bust his TV set. I think it's a little overreacting. But I think there's, I think there's one thing that's safe to say is he's a big fan of Doctor Who. And this guy... Who's in the clip is towing, trying to tell the perpetrators, um, what could happen to get when they get found? You know, I think it was like one hundred thousand dollars fine and one year in jail or two years. I think it might have been or both, both of those. Now the thing is, is that back to back to the article, if they try to track down, and this is why be oh, going to this thing, there needs to be anonymous. The fact that he's autistic, I think it just should be left alone. I mean, you know, I think it would do more harm than good, you know, just emotionally break him. And it just, it wouldn't do good. You know, so it might just be best that it does remain unsolved. And that's why the Pogans released the names. He said he tried to reach them uh, several times, whether it's email, actual mail, you know, try to contact them. Not working. He said apparently they still live in the same house together, the two of them, so... Is assume that Jay is still in their case care because that's what it was at the time in the '87. So, and after receiving numerous no responses for like a while, it was pretty clear to Beep Hogue that they just wanted to be left alone. So, what he did, he just let them alone, and whether people liked it or not, then he recently came out and said, "Hey, and this is like more recent now." He said, "Hey, I've been working on the audio. I made it a little more clear." Mm -hmm. And it was, I watched it, it was a little more clear. And then he said, I'm going to talk to one of my friends who's good with audio stuff. And he's, I consider him a genius. And if he could cancel down the, uh, what's it called? What's it called? The use. What they use to make the voice sound like that. Voice modulation. Then, no, uh, he might be able to cover the voice to see if it's really Jay. Now... It might be impossible because the, the way to do that is you gotta know what the, the frequency is to cancel it out. You gotta put it back on, on the same frequency, but it doesn't seem to be working, you know? So, I haven't gotten a response yet from him, so I'll have to see what happens. And uh, the point of the voice modulation, many people have gotten the idea that his voice is really creepy, which it was, but that wasn't the point. The voice was, the point of doing that was to disguise his voice, not to come off as creepy. Although, that was just a win-win, I guess, for him right there. The fact that it was creepy. Why they would show that with Gray on the news is... Your guess is as good as mine. I like how that one guy said that he just showed human anatomy and just stopped right there. That's what he should have done. Alright, that's the news reports. That's pretty much all I have to say there. Mo Howard talking. And, yeah... Well, that just about wraps up this video. You have any questions, you will let me know in the comments below, and I'll answer them to the best of my ability. Also, if you want me to do a documentary on something else, you let me know in the comments below, and yeah. Special thanks to all the clips I've gotten, and everything. Special thanks to you for watching this. There will be credits in the video for all the clips, although I still think, as I said earlier, 
BBC might not be too thrilled, too thrilled, but don't worry, that happens, it'll, it'll be momentarily, and it'll be fixed, and if it's not happening as you're watching this, then everything's fine then. Alright, I hope you enjoyed this, this has been Bo Howard speaking to you as your host of this documentary, and I will see you in the future.